The Swiss forced Grand Seiko to stop using the word chronometer in 1967. But why then does this 1974 watch say officially certified chronometer on the dial? Well, we're going to find out right now. This is peak King Seiko. It's a 56KS. But if you search for 56KS, you're going to find many different case shapes and dials. But we got the best one for you here today. This one's reference number 5625-7041. Probably one of the greatest Seiko cases ever made. This reference was made for five years from 1969 to 1974. And although King Seiko was mostly made by Daini Seiko Sha, this one was made by Suwa, who made Grand Seiko. And this was definitely a luxury watch back in 1974 when this particular watch was made. And for a 50 year old watch, it looks incredible. When you want a beautiful Seiko, you have to turn to God. I'm God. Wait a minute, God? Yes, the grammar of design. And my favorite aspect of the God cases are those dynamic looks. Take the bezel for example. It's sharp, but it sinks into the lugs and mid case and doesn't look out of place at all. And the crystal sticks out beautifully, showing off that dramatic bevel. And the crown is sunken in just a bit, using those flanks as a crown guard. This one is a push-pull with hacking seconds, and it helps give this King Seiko 50 meters of water resistance. And the magic about this reference is you can actually make it waterproof again, which I did. Thanks to a company called VTA who reproduce heavy duty modern gaskets for the vintage Seikos. So we got a brand new case back gasket, a brand new gasket for the crystal, and a brand new crown gasket. My watchmaker tested it to 30 meters wet test and it passed with flying colors. And I bet it will pass 50 as well. So to have peace of mind with water resistance on a vintage watch, man, that's priceless and pretty rare. Any little bit of moisture can creep in and ruin that rare dial. And as you can see, this dial is basically in new old stock condition. Now let's do those dimensions I got. 36.5 millimeters in diameter and a secret measurement of 30 millimeters even. We got an incredible thinness of 10.1 and it's an automatic. Wow. And no drilled lugs and a lug to lug of 42.3. I say this on every vintage Seiko I do, but they don't make them like they used to. <laughs> okay, so classic vintage size here, but there is a word of warning from me. If you're a prospective buyer, just know that this watch does wear smaller than its size indicates. Now why? Well, it's because of those huge high polished bevels on the side of the case. They put more emphasis on the dial and the case kind of disappears. And I would say this watch wears more like a 35 millimeter. Now with all that being said, I wish they would make a modern reissue of this watch at about 38.5 and it will wear maybe like a 37. That would be incredible and I would pay a pretty penny for it. Okay, the big question. Why does this watch say officially certified chronometer on the dial? Well, for you hardcore Seikopaths, you know Grand Seiko was sent a cease and desist letter to stop putting chronometer on the dial. Grand Seiko was doing in-house self-certification and the Swiss did not like that. So Seiko complied and in 1967, the 57GS no longer had chronometer on the dial. But this watch is from 74 and it says chronometer. So how could that be? Well, the answer is quite simple. In 1968, the Japan Chronometer Inspection Institute was founded and King Seiko would send in their watches for that official certification. And the year 68 was when Seiko first competed in the Genève Observatory competition. They set an all-time record for the best score for mechanical movements. The only movements that bested them were three prototype quartz movements. And after Seiko's huge win, the Swiss industry giants threatened to boycott and demanded an end to the chronometer trials. When this sort of stuff happens, you realize it's not about fair competition and letting the best man win. 
It's just about protecting Swiss interests, and it proved that the industry is very resistant to any external excellence. Now, speaking of a Japanese chronometer, how does this one perform after 50 years? Let's check it out. We got caliber 5625B, often referred to as a masterpiece, coming in at only 4.25 millimeter. Designed for longevity, the mainspring arbor bushings are jeweled. It's going to last forever. It's a high beat back then, a 288 VPH hacking and hand winding automatic. It's got 25 joules and 47 hours of power reserve. But there is a negative. Some of these movements came out with a plastic quick set date gear. However, the company I mentioned earlier, VTA, does make a replacement metal part that any watchmaker can swap in. Once you do the metal swap, the movement is theoretically perfection. My watch still has the plastic date changer, but it works perfectly because it never broke. If you try to do a quick set change when you're in the danger zone, then it could break. And that's usually from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. So avoid those times and you will be fine. The dial is a stunning sunray white with gorgeous hand applied baton markers. There's black down the middle and the hands are incredibly unique. The ultra thin pool style minute hand really stands out and I'm a big fan of it. We have an applied Seiko logo and KS on the dial. This watch is truly worthy of the name King and can you believe back in 1974 it cost only 30,000 yen? That was about 200 US USD. When we adjust for inflation, that's roughly 1200 USD. I think it's worth it, but I want to hear your thoughts and opinions. And if you're a Seiko fan and want more videos like this one, then go ahead and click into one of the two videos on the right of your screen right now and I will see you there.